that you on record? Good. Okay. Right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody that Lynn's just uh, mentioned has joined the team since we left. I'm delighted to say that two people have joined my team, uh, my, my team and Tom's team while while we've been away. I actually got off the plane uh, and switched my phone on to a message from Emma Duncan saying that she was uh, trying to get registered. Uh, and this was actually while I was on the plane going to Vegas. So my business clearly works uh, quite well or even better, even when I'm not here. Uh, and also, uh, uh, David uh, McCaffrey has also joined our team as well, while, again, while I was away and I had absolutely no involvement in that whatsoever so far. So welcome to the team, everybody, and congratulations for all the recognitions this week. Absolutely brilliant. We're really, really moving on here. Um, now, Tom and I, as you know, have just come back on uh, late on Monday night from Las Vegas. We, it took us 24 hours to get home. Uh, this included a 10-hour stopover at Gatwick Airport, which is a lovely airport, but it's not that nice, really. So uh, we were kind of stuck there for a little bit of time, but absolutely worth it. Every single second of the trip was just absolutely worth every second of the travel and then the hard, the hard slog it took to get there. And the hard slog to get there actually started uh, just over a year ago when at the January conference last year, Michael Katkar uh, announced that the... the the next destination for 2018 was going to be Las Vegas. Leaving, uh, leaving the UK on the 4th of April to get to Las Vegas. Uh, the 4th of April is actually Tom's birthday. And exactly 20 years ago on Tom's birthday, uh, Tom and I actually were in Las Vegas uh, just for one night on the way to somewhere else. And what, what a trip it was. It was absolutely fabulous. And we realised that uh, the opportunity to go there again exactly 20 years later on the exact same date was just a sign for us that we had to do it. And we decided there and then that we were going to do everything it took to get there. Okay. Now, somewhere along the way, we, we think uh, that people that didn't want the trip quite as much as we did and fell by the wayside along the way, uh, obviously, you know, the, the, the less people that were striving for the trip, the more people who were really, really striving for the trip had a chance to get there. And the, the message of this training is not look at my holiday photos, it's far, far from it. Uh, the message from this training tonight is set a goal, go for the goal. If it's a goal that'll get you out of bed every day, uh, doing what you really don't want to do in the, in the horrible weather and all the rest of it, when you'd really rather not, you'd really rather watch TV or go for a drink or something. You know, if the goal is big enough, it will get you out of bed. And this was just so, so worth it. Every single second of it was absolutely brilliant. So this is actually leaving Las Vegas Airport, believe it or not. The, the, the airport's very, very close to, uh, to the city of Las Vegas itself. And we could actually see all the hotels and all the landmarks and everything as the plane came into land. And this was the first thing we saw driving out of the airport. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, the palm trees, the sunshine and everything that was just there for us. We went into, the, went into the, the Mirage Hotel and that slide is actually the foyer in the lobby of the Mirage Hotel. Absolutely beautiful, very, very opulent, marble floors everywhere, just the, the size of it. This is actually the check-in desk with um, a massive, massive fish tank behind it. Those fish are real, a huge, enormous aquarium all the way along the check-in desk, which is absolutely massive. There were about 20 staff there to, to, to check people in. This is, this is our bedroom in the, in the hotel, two big, massive, uh, two big, massive beds, beautiful room, absolutely lovely, uh, really, really comfortable. And what a night's sleep we got. It was absolutely brilliant. Okay. And this is, this is part of the gardens in the hotel. Beautiful waterfalls everywhere. Uh, some of the grass was real, actually, and some of it is artificial grass because being Las Vegas, it needs to have a little bit of tackiness. Uh, but this is, this is the grounds of the hotel uh, with the waterfalls and everything. And uh, up on the left corner there, that's uh, the edge of the Treasure Island Hotel, which is another famous landmark. Um, and uh, I get this, this uh, on the right hand side of the picture is uh, the, the, the Las Vegas Boulevard, known as the Strip, with all the big hotels and casinos and everything on it. And we were, it was right in our doorstep, immediately outside uh, the hotel, with just a few minutes walk away from, from all the buzz and everything. And there was loads and loads of buzz to see. Uh, this is, the, this is the, the edge of one of the waterfalls again in the grounds of the hotel. Uh, and over in the background there on the left hand side with the, the, the sort of a white facade there with the, the statues on the top of it. That's uh, the Venetian Hotel, which was right across the road. There's more slides from that later on. It's absolutely beautiful, really lovely place to see. Okay, so the first night um, that we were there, uh, that we had a welcome reception. This was on the 53rd floor of the Pams Hotel on the roof terrace. And when we got there, it was still daylight. We went about six o'clock. We had landed about half past three and everybody was really, really tired. So they had an early reception, which in theory was going to finish at eight o'clock. 
and they took us out in the bus uh, to this beautiful uh, champagne reception, um, lovely uh, edibles and everything like that. We just ate and ate and ate the whole week. Uh, but when we got there, it was daylight and people were taking pictures of the, the city and everything like that. And gradually as the sunset, the place starts to light up and it becomes massively spectacular. It is just absolutely amazing, beautiful, uh, fabulous lights and everything like that in the city. And it just took your breath away. It was absolutely brilliant. A great speech from Michael Katka and uh, just to welcome everybody. So Tom and I couldn't wait for the first bus back. We were absolutely shattered. We got the first bus back to the Mirage just about half past nine, I think it was, not eight o'clock, half past nine. Uh, but the last bus went back to the hotel at half past three in the morning because there's a lot of people on these trips that are far more experienced party goers than us. So if partying's your thing, uh, these trips are, are set to accommodate you whatever level you want to party at. Okay. So the next morning, after a massive, massive breakfast, um, we took off, uh, we, we were taken down the road uh, about half an hour's drive away to the beautiful aerodrome at Boulder City, which is very, very famous from Western movies and stuff, uh, to fly over the Grand Canyon in a wee plane like this. Uh, the party was, there was about 70 of us on the trip, and the party was split into uh, two uh, teams. We were, the, we were the Elvis team, Mary, and the other team was the Sinatra team. And the Elvis team went down to the aerodrome first and they had two planes for us and two planes for the Sinatra team coming up a couple of hours later. And they, they flew us in a wee plane like this with two pilots uh, over the Grand Canyon, which is absolutely spectacular. So the next few pictures are just uh, pictures of the Grand Canyon. Uh, we all had a headset on so that we could listen to our commentary. And, um, and at the, the bottom right, this isn't a, this isn't a really a great, a great uh, picture, but at the, bo the, the second picture on the right there, uh, at the bottom of the of the picture, which I really should have cropped a little bit, which is where Lynn's pointing to, that's actually the Hoover Dam, uh, which we pass over on the way to the Grand Canyon. Just so spectacular. And on the, the other picture, uh, I actually you can see it at the top of the other picture on the left hand side, and that's a that's a road bridge uh, just below the dam. Uh, that, that you know, obviously you get an amazing view of it. Uh, I think that dam is uh, famous among other things for the first Superman movie. Uh, where Lex Luthor arranges for it to be blown up uh, and all the water to cascade down from the, the lake above into the into the, the valley below and everything like that. Uh, but it's just fabulous to be in a place that really was a film location. So the next few shots are just uh, pictures of the, the landscape from the, from the plane uh, over the Grand Canyon. Absolutely jaw-droppingly, breathtakingly beautiful. It's just absolutely amazing. And the only way to see it really is from the air. Um, so we had a really good view of that. Okay. And later on that night, we were taken to a country in Western Bar called uh, Stoney's. Uh, you can look up Stoney's on uh, YouTube or it's got a Facebook page. And it's a Wild West country and Western club. They've got the Bucking Bronco. They've got a massive dance floor where they have line dancing and they teach line dancing. Uh, but all the locals uh, were there as well. So we had, we had a, private, a private section of the bar where we had a great view of the dance floor. And here's Craig quite learning to line dance. And he actually was brilliant. There was, a, there was quite a lot of people from the party went up and learned to line dance. And it was just absolutely brilliant. That's um, Margaret Jap in the middle of the picture there with the, the white shirt with the embroidery on it. Uh, and next to her uh, is uh, Abigail Coakley. And I think behind her is Jackie McCormick in that picture. So, but, but, you know, the... People from the people from the team were up, uh, were up dancing and learning to dance. And people that go to the club all the time were up helping everybody to learn how to dance. Uh, sometimes there was line dancing and couples dancing going on round about it at the same time. What a buzz! Absolutely brilliant atmosphere. We had a great barbecue. Everything absolutely free laid on, free bar all night. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, the the bar staff were dancing on the bar. They had they had. Uh, like uh, rails to hold on to at the top of the bar to save them falling off the bar. There was cage dancing, there was uh, bucking bronco rides. It was just absolutely brilliant, really, really good night. And again, I think the last bus got back to the hotel about three in the morning. Uh, here's, a, here's a picture of uh, a few very successful distributors in the business. Uh, we've got Marie Ryan on the left-hand side there. Jill Nicholson, who's coming to speak at the Millionaires next Saturday. We just absolutely can't wait for that. Abigail Coakley, and I think that's Eamon. Uh, is that Eamon Lynn? I think it is Eamon on the right-hand side of that picture as well, just waiting for the bus to go back from the, from the, the Country and Western Club back to the hotel. Brilliant night. Okay. Now, the next morning, Kate got out, right out of her com comfort zone. Um, we had to uh, meet in the desert. We were taken again in the bus to the desert. 
uh, to go out in the sand buggies. Now, Tom couldn't wait for this, and it would appear that I'm the only person on the trip that really didn't love it as much as everybody else did. Uh, the sand buggies, you'll see them in a minute. Uh, they're in the desert, there's no shelter at all. You go out to the desert, you get helmeted and, and uh, goggled up and everything, and then you go out in these buggies, and they're very, very fast. They're very, very sturdy. You can, the, the, the guy uh, who was running the event asked everybody to, to climb up on the buggies and climb over the buggies and everything to get pictures taken before we started from the official photography uh, from Pam, who's, uh, who works for Clean Easy, was there to, to record the whole thing. Um, and they told us just to sit on the buggies, absolutely can't break them, get your picture taken, and then we set off very, very fast into the desert over those hills in the background there. And it was absolutely terrifying. Um, driving up the hills, he said, absolutely no way ever used the brake. Tom did all the driving, there's no way I would have done it. Um, but, you know, just, you know, putting the gas all the way up the hills and putting the gas all the way down the hills. And some of them are virtually vertical drops like this. And it was absolutely terrifying. Uh, very, very jarring on your back and you're, 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 you know, holding on for grim death. Very, very jarring on your wrists and everything holding on. But Tom absolutely loved it. Uh, I, you know, de definitely wasn't on my bucket list, but it was on quite a few people's bucket lists. Um, and that, that, um, that day we had lunch at, at the, burger the burger van that was uh, there to feed us all when we came off. Um, and as if that wasn't enough of adrenaline for one day, Jackie McCormick went back to Las Vegas in the afternoon and skydived off the stratosphere, which is a thousand feet high, uh, just on her way back to the hotel. She just obviously thought that she'd throw that in for good measure and had an absolute buzz doing it. Some people are real adrenaline junkies. They want to do the zip slide and everything. Sorry, Ursula, I didn't do it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but at least about 10 people in the party actually did book to go and do the zip slide. So uh, loads and loads of adrenaline there if, if that's the way you want to. So that's the way you want to roll. Okay. So next slide is um, had a little bit of free time in the afternoon. We went, explore, we, we, went, we went out exploring really every afternoon because all the activities were planned for the morning before it got too hot. So in the afternoon you could go out and about and do your own thing really until the evening events. Um, on the, the day that we went to the Grand Canyon, they actually hadn't planned anything for lunch because people were coming back to the hotel at different times. But they gave everybody a preloaded credit card that day. Uh, with $35 on it to go and get your own lunch anywhere you wanted. You could use it, you could use the credit card anywhere at all uh, in Vegas. So we ended up just going to Denny's across the road and having salads and stuff just for simplicity because the, the food in the hotel was just absolutely phenomenal. So we were having massive breakfasts every day. So everything we could think of was laid on for us. Didn't have to put our hand in our pocket at all for any food or drink at all the whole time we were away. Just absolutely amazing hospitality and generosity. Okay. So that night on the, that was a Friday night, I think it was, yep, Friday night, uh, we went to the Bellagio Hotel, which was two hotels down the road, but they still took us in buses to let us see the sights on the way there. And this is, on the left there, is the, the, um, the ceiling of the, the, the theatre in the Bellagio Hotel. Uh, absolutely beautiful theatre, full-size theatre with, you know, uh, stalls and circles and, balconies and boxes, you know, private boxes and everything. Massive, massive, massive theatre. And it's been set up for the last 20 years with a massive, massive uh, water tank in it for this show by Cirque du Soleil. It's called O. And if you have a look on, on uh, YouTube and look for some uh, excerpts from the show, this is absolutely fabulous. Uh, there's actually three ladies in that picture and uh, God knows how they get into those positions. But, uh, they, they, you know, they're diving from a great height. They're diving from the from the ceiling of the theatre, they're di diving from hundreds of feet in the air and on the the, um, the 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 stage floor can be raised and lowered, it's raised and lowered into the water tank and when the floor is down there are synchron synchronised swimmers in the water tank and they're underwater for quite a long time, they've got breathing tubes and everything under there uh, and the, but the, 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 the timing of it is absolutely amazing, they've got people jumping off that structure uh, they've got divers, they've got acrobats, they've got trapeze artists and everything. Fabulous, fabulous show. Nobody had a clue what it was about, but it was just about the spectacle and the cleverness and the timing and the, the, the breathtakingness of it because if anything had gone wrong with, with the level of that floor at any time, somebody would have died. It was absolutely amazing. Just such a huge, enormous thrill of a spectacle. And the ticket for the show, everybody had their own ticket to go in. Uh, the ticket for the show said $134 on it, and there was 70 of us on the trip, and we had the best seats in the house. 
absolutely amazing, all paid for by Queen Easy. Okay. So this is uh, the outside of the Bellagio Hotel, very, very famous landmark, uh, which we passed the front of it on the way home. And that was one of the reasons why it was only down the road that they took everybody in buses so that we could all see as much as possible. Uh, every time we went out, especially in the dark, we could get to see uh, everything there was to see in the strip. And it was such an enormous thrill just to see these places that you've heard so much about. The Bellagio Hotel, I think, is the one in Ocean's Eleven where the, the, the gang are trying to rob the the vault in the Bellagio Hotel under the casino. Um, so a huge, enormous landmark, such a thrill to see these places, all, all these places. Uh, and between the Bellagio and um, the, the Mirage where we were staying, the Caesars Palace is there, and that's where the enormous uh, international boxing matches go on. So we, we spent a bit of time in there the next day as well. So this is, um, this is the fake Eiffel Tower on the left and uh, the outside of the Flamingo Hotel on the right. Uh, the Flamingo Hotel inside it, everything is pink. They've got real flamingos in the gardens. They've got beautiful gardens with uh, lots of wildlife in them and stuff. And the Flamingo is actually where Tom and I had spent the night 20 years ago when we went uh, on our previous trip. So it was lovely just to go in there and, and see that again and see all the, you know, how it's changed since we were there before. Just lovely to see that. Okay. And these are just another couple of views on the way back to the, back to the hotel from the, from the Bellagio. Okay. And that's that's slightly out of sync, but that's uh, that's us having our outdoor. It's not me and Tom, obviously, but that's uh, on the right is um, Stuart McKibben, and on the left is Gary Watson having their lunch in the desert after the sand buggies. Okay, so the next day on the Saturday was conference day. Uh, the conference was absolutely brilliant. There were six speakers from the network, and Michael Katkar, who has has as always was in absolutely top form, just a brilliant, brilliant day. Great tips. Uh, the speakers were, I think, in the next slide, we had um, Michael Katkar, we had Jill Nicholson, um, Becky Spink, Peter Wellock, uh, James Folger, Denise Neal, and Craig White. All of them absolutely outstanding, all of them with incredible tips for the business. Uh, we're just so grateful to them for giving up their time on conference day, you know, to, to, to go through all the nerves and everything of having to speak on conference day because some of them hadn't spoken before and they were absolutely top class, every one of them. It was brilliant. Okay, and there's Tom and I with Michael Katkar on conference day. Okay, after the conference, which, um, you know, normal a normal clean, easy conference in Birmingham is maybe five or six hours. Uh, when you go to a trip like this, the conference is two hours. It still makes it a business trip. Uh, but after after that, if you were wise to feed you. So here, I haven't shown you any pictures of the food yet, but there's a couple of pictures of the buffet lunch that we had straight after the conference in a lovely, we served in a lovely sunroom uh, and everybody just, you know, informally chatting and everything like that. As much as we wanted to eat and drink, again, another free bar, just absolutely brilliant. Okay. Now, that afternoon, uh, that was the Saturday afternoon, uh, that afternoon, Tom and Margaret Japp and I went out to go and see Caesar's Palace next door. Now, in the left-hand picture here, uh, we're in Caesar's Palace, and on the left-hand side, this is actually a spiral um, moving uh, escalator. Absolutely brilliant. Just such, a, such an amazing concept. Just brilliant feat of engineering. Great fun. Uh, and on the right is one of the many uh, decorative ceilings in Caesar's Palace. It's such an opulent place. Beautiful to see. Okay. Um, as you go further in, you get to the forum shops, and the forum shops are set out like a street in Rome, and you, would, you, you really do think when you're there that you're in an actual street in Italy. It's just absolutely brilliant. The floor is uh, shiny and varnished. It looks as if it looks as if it's just been raining, and it's and you're you're walking down a a, a lovely street in Rome. Um, just you know, after the rain, after the rainfall, it's so relaxing and peaceful. Uh, it's such a, a, an oasis, really, in Vegas, which could, as a kind of mad, crazy place. But we just had a great afternoon there. That's me and Margaret Jap. And uh, being a being a replica of Rome, of course, I've got statues on every ceiling, uh, on every on every uh, rooftop. And the sky is um, it's a it's an indoor place. The sky is painted and illuminated like that all the time to look like a kind of an evening stroll. It's just beautiful. This is like two o'clock in the afternoon. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And it's a kind of typical shop in the, the forum shops. And loads of, loads of statues. 
uh, loads of uh, loads of shops. I think that particular mall had um, three branches of Victoria's Secret alone. They just had loads and loads of different uh, very upmarket shops. It's also got two Rolex shops. Um, really, you know, as if one wasn't enough, as if you know you couldn't spend your money fast enough in a place like that. Which, which, if you had money, I think that would be true. Absolutely beautiful place. Okay. Uh, Tom decided to go off on his own for a wee bit of shopping after that. Margaret and I went across the road to go and have a look at the Venetian. Uh, Venetian is another really world famous hotel and it has this beautiful uh, setting outside. This, this bit's actually outside. You can, get, you can have a gondola ride there. The gondolas that go under a bridge and they actually go inside the hotel. And there's some more pictures of the inside of it in a second. Um, if you take uh, the gondola ride, your, your gondolier that, that um, propels you along this beautiful canal, this is now inside again, uh, but the gondoliers all sing opera to you while you're, while you're on the gondola. Uh, Margaret and I stopped for a, a lemonade just at that, uh, just at the, the top right there of that picture. Uh, just stopped, we were right beside the canal watching the gondolas coming along and it was absolutely beautiful, very relaxing, just lovely, lovely to do. This is us in gala dinner night. This was the last night of the trip and uh, the, last, uh, the last formal gathering before we left for uh, home the next day. Okay. And in the morning when we'd gone for breakfast, the company had, uh, the, 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 there, was, there was five travel couriers with us. I forgot to say that. There was, uh, I think, six Clean Easy staff and five travel couriers with us. And the couriers were up, you know, from the first person getting up in the morning to the last person going to bed at night. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and on, the, on that morning, they gave, us, uh, they gave us all some chips to spend in the casino. So this is us at the gala dinner. That's Margaret Jap again on the right. Uh, Gail and Stuart McKibben on the left, who are SEDs and Margaret, Gra Margaret Japp's team, who have been in lots and lots of conferences, both of them have. Um, and we didn't know this, Lynn, uh, but it's actually a tradition at the gala dinner that they, they have a big sort of freeze that everybody can write their message on. Uh, so, you know, they, they, they give you markers and everything. Everybody writes their message. Uh, and I think the next slide is Kevin Ryder's message, which I thought was quite funny. No, that's not it. That's, my one. that's Kevin Ryder's message. There's a guy who works down the chip shops. Where's his Michael? Clean easy, you rock. I just loved that. I thought that was hilarious. Okay. So this, this young chap here uh, was one of our travel couriers. And when we met him on the Wednesday when we arrived in Las Vegas, I was thinking the whole time, I don't know who it is this, this boy reminds me of. Nice young boy in his 20s thought, I don't know who this is. but you know, it always, you know, reminded me of some of somebody just with his mannerisms, his gestures and everything like that. And at the gala dinner, at the end of the trip, uh, when Michael was making his speech at the, ga the gala dinner, he introduced this boy as his son, Kieran. Uh, he's very, 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 very like Michael. His mannerisms and gestures are exactly the same. He works for the, he works for the courier company. The courier company have been uh, helping with Clean Easy Trips for several years now. And Kieran had gone out to work for them in Florida uh, in August last year. And the, the travel company had asked Michael if it was okay for Kieran to come and help us. It was absolutely brilliant. It meant such a lot to Michael as well to see him working and for Kieran to, to see him working as well because, um, you know, they'd never, you know, their paths had never crossed in the workplace before. Uh, although Michael's always brought Kieran up to be uh, very, very positive with great self-esteem and personal development and everything. And he, and he was watching the secret videos at, at the age of 10 and everything like that. He's in his 20s now. Absolutely fabulous human being. And it was just nice to see the two of them together, having, having a great time. Although both of them were working and they didn't get a lot of private time together, but they, they both were working and, and seeing the, the, the respect and everything that everybody had for both of them was just absolutely brilliant. So during the gala dinner, um, we all went, well, quite, quite a few of us went out to see um, the, the Mirage Hotel has its own volcano outside. It's an electronic volcano, obviously, that, that goes off at timed intervals. And none of us had managed to see it throughout the trip because it, it's time to go off at eight o'clock and nine o'clock at night. We were always at an event, but the night of the gala dinner, um, they have an extra, Friday and Saturday nights, they have an extra uh, show of it uh, at 10 o'clock. And... Um, a few of us went out to see it. There's actually a video of it as well that I took from my phone, but Tom was taking pictures and I was taking videos. And it's very, very spectacular. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, you can see it on YouTube. The show lasts for quite a few minutes and it's got pyrotechnics and sound and music and a huge, huge atmosphere. Loads and loads of crowds turn out to see it every time it goes off. 
and Tom and I had spent quite a bit of time watching it the last time we were in Las Vegas and we were determined not to miss it. So we went outside in our evening dress to, to have a look at this volcano and we took Pam, the, the official photographer, out with us and a few other people as well to go out and see it as well. So it's just a nice special memory uh, of our last night in Vegas. Okay, so here's a, a couple of images of the hotel now. That's the, the official brochure picture of the Mirage Hotel with the volcano at, at the outside on the right hand side. And the palm trees, of course. And another one that's uh, obviously a picture of the, the volcano erupting. That's think is that the last slide? Oh yeah, the, the hotel had the hotel had its own Cirque du Soleil show going on as well. It's been on the go for years and years. And the one that's on in the Mirage Hotel is a Beatles one. It's called Love, uh, and it's a it's a Beatles show. And the hotel has its own shopping mall as well, beautiful uh, shops and everything in it. You can buy absolutely anything and everything in the shopping mall just without going outside the hotel. But this is the actual jacket that Paul McCartney wore in the, the Sergeant Pepper's album cover. Uh, so it's it's framed in, a, in the shop window with uh, the, the certificate of authenticity and that's uh, just some of the other shops as well that we can, we can see in the mall as well. And some of the floral displays and everything that are just, just by the by. Beautiful, beautiful hotel, really lovely. So basically, uh, what we're waiting for now is the announcement of the next destination from Clean Easy. I can absolutely assure you that anybody watching this presentation tonight can definitely get there. Absolutely you can. You really, really can. All you have to do is set a goal, find out what you have to do to get there, plan the work, work the plan. You can absolutely go on these trips. They're absolutely phenomenal. There's loads of people who have been on lots of trips that will be happy to tell you how they qualified for them. Uh, but you know, the first the first thing to always make sure you do is find out exactly what you need to do. The, the, the goals are set there to be difficult to do, but doable, because if they weren't doable, we couldn't have done it. Uh, that's our third Clean Easy trip. We're qualified for Krakow at the end of this year as well. That'll be our fourth, our fourth Clean Easy trip. But there's people there that have been on 20 odd Clean Easy trips because they set the goal, they plan the work, they work the plan. So that is an actual sunset on the plane flying into Glasgow uh, on Monday night. Um, just to set the holiday off to a perfect end, because I really love that picture. But basically, you can do it. Absolutely, you can. Why not you? And why not now? Just go for it. Set the goal, work for the goal, and however you perform towards getting the goal, you'll earn more money, you'll build your team, you'll build your business. That's what it's all about. It's all about making memories, but it's all about giving you a goal and something to strive for. We are so, so thrilled that we went to Las Vegas and we cannot wait for the next trip. Absolutely brilliant. We'd love to take some of the team with you. Thanks very much. That was brilliant. Before you finish, can you just promote my training for me? Absolutely. Yep. Scottish Millionaires on the 21st of April at the Hillcroft Hotel in Whitburn. Uh, the, the speakers are going to be Jill Nicholson, who's the current distributor of the year. She's very, very funny. Um, she nearly killed Carla in the sand buggies. Carla had never come out with so many swear words in her life. But she's very, very funny. She's brilliant. She loves the business. She's been in the business since the 60s. Um, what Jill doesn't know about the business isn't worth knowing. Uh, Tracy Payne and Harvey Kent uh, in the bottom left-hand picture there, who are many winners, phenomenal business builders in the business. Uh, Rob Foster above there with the cars, who's a huge, huge business within Clean Easy. Absolutely brilliant. Great to have him. Very charismatic. Michael Cat Carr. Nothing more to be said. He's just an absolute top form. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy to have at the helm of the business. I can't wait to hear from him again. And uh, who else, Lynn? You can unmute yourself, Lynn.